First to Paris, where authorities say three gunmen shot and killed a dozen people at the offices of the weekly newspaper Charlie Hebdo. The paper has run cartoons and other content satirizing radical Islam and the prophet Muhammad. In the past, Hebdo has been firebombed for that coverage. Today, its cover page featured a controversial author who's released a fictional account of France in 2022 under an Islamic president. The real French president, Francois Hollande, calls the shootings today a terrorist attack of the most extreme barbarity. Video shows the gunmen running through the streets of Paris. An eyewitness quotes one of them as saying, the prophet is avenged. As of our taping, they had not been caught. Ten of those murdered were journalists, including the paper's editor and chief cartoonist. The other two victims were police officers guarding the office. Well, Ernest, you know, 2015 has started where 2014 left off. Islamic fundamentalists are terrorizing the public and killing journalists. Well, this is one of the things that uh, the, the Obama administration and, and others in Europe uh, were concerned about was the, the Islamic State had operatives in all over Europe. And some say here in the United States, even though we haven't seen any of that and they were afraid of them making these kinds of actions in in terms of going after individuals and and having these sort of terroristic acts within you know european capitals and at specific targets and this newspaper which has long been known as one of the targets for not just this this group but other uh islamic terrorist groups i mean there was a reason why those police officers were there well, and they haven't been the only journalists who've been threatened because of running these sorts of controversial cartoons or articles. We remember the Dutch publication a few years ago that ran a contest for the cartoons of Muhammad, and they were threatened. And I just wonder, Bob, if that and all the other things we saw in the past 12 months with regard to journalists being kidnapped, beheaded, is there an additional chilling effect from what's happened today on journalists, commentators, cartoonists? I think from time to time you're going to see that, but it does. all this does is point out that that this is sometimes a very dangerous profession that we're in, this business of journalism. There are always going to be people who don't want you to say something or don't want you to express an opinion. And that might be emphasized with some of the extreme things we're seeing. But at the same time, there are more subtle efforts, too, that are always underway, even in our own local communities, where people want to control the messenger and the message it gets out. I think, too, Ernest, I mean, this just plays into the hands of some stories that we're going to be covering in 2015 anyway with regard to right-wing parties, anti-EU political parties growing in Europe. This this kind of story is going to add weight to that coverage. Yeah, you're going to see that because, I mean, you have the, uh, I know in the UK, they're having their elections uh, coming up this year, I think in May, in which they're going to be voting for a new prime minister. And one of the big issues there is immigration. And a lot of that immigration is coming from, not only from Islamic countries, but also coming from Eastern Europe. So you're going to have those kinds of right-wing extremists happening there. France is dealing with it right now in terms of their election and their political structure. Uh, structure and a lot of it was 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 talked about in this newspaper and other newspapers there about the rise in this sort of right wing fanaticism which is sort of pushing back against Islam and Islam is pushing forward in, in what it's trying to do. 